And welcome once again to Radio Primavera Sound, to our Twitch stream. This is uh, our first interview of day three, let's call it, because we were here on Wednesday as well. Um, and it is a real pleasure to be here with The Last Dinner Party. How are you? Great. Hola. Good. <laughs> Hola. 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 Yeah, well, thanks. I, Very well. Toro <laughs> Ben. I've got to say, Mark and I, we agree on some things. We don't agree on everything musically, but um, we definitely agree on The Last Dinner Party. We, I think, is it the theatricality? What is it? I don't know. We agree on Sparks and we agree on The Last Dinner Party. So there we go. <laughs> so we're very, we were very pleased to have you here. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Thanks for having us. us. I'm just wondering, like, it's been an amazing few years for you. Um, have you sort of had a chance to reflect on everything that's happened? No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you know when we do. We were kind Definitely. of expecting that. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably for the whirlwind. Best. Kind mm. of no time to stop and think about it. Just to hang on for dear life, <laughs> basically, go, and, go, go. and enjoy the ride. <laughs> it's kind of like the Orpheus and Eurydice thing. Like if you look behind you, you're gonna just be like sent back. So I'm like, what? That was so pretentious. That was, Jesus uh, Christ! That was a lot. It's kind of like <laughs> early in the day. Like, you know, <laughs> yes, well, please. Well, yeah. TLDP <laughs> type beat thing <laughs> to say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's like, um, you know, fast car, go fast. Yeah. Don't stop. Roller coaster. Yeah. Because you have said that, that, that you were kind of ambitious uh, from the beginning, but even on anyone's wildest dreams, I mean, getting that so soon, I mean, have you, did you ever imagine that you arrived to where you have arrived with just well, just one album. I mean, you were kindly already there with just one single out. <laughs> no. no, no. Me and Georgia were at this festival two years ago. You really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We came and because we'd had tickets for as three a, years as, a don't, as an audience. Yeah, as an audience Ooh. member, we'd had tickets for three years. We couldn't go because of COVID and yeah. getting rescheduled. And then we came. We were like, "This is the best place in the world. This is so much fun." <laughs> Imagine if we played here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and now we're back and we're playing and we're playing the Cooper <gasps> stage, which is such a great stage. So it's yeah, it's really surreal. Wasn't it like, I mean, when were not uh, Black Midi the ones that already told us they were uh, sitting there uh, at the same place that you are sitting and they were uh, explaining the same to us that they were, they came to the festival kind of a couple of years prior and then decided that they wanted to be in a band and <laughs> da, they made That's it. So cool. <laughs> yeah. <Okay>. Pipeline. <laughs> well, one thing I didn't know, I um, only discovered recently, well, I think it's right, is that you recorded your album before you released anything. So you knew you had this album in your back pocket, right? That must have felt pretty good. <laughs> but, but why... Like, why a, did... like a secret weapon. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, why did, you, why did you do it like that? I, I mean, like, well, all, all the songs had been written and they were ready to go, so it felt kind of like a natural you know, thing, why wait? And also, I think we didn't want to get stuck in that trap of putting out one song with nothing else to back it up and then maybe it doing well and then scrambling <laughs> to, to put something out. So I just think it was kind of, you know, we wanted to do it. The songs were, you know, ready. And then also just makes things less stressful, <laughs> I think, for us. <laughs> Also, um, you were, um, you have explained that you were very well rehearsed, even though, uh, even before just starting to, to play gigs, to kind of uh, came out of the shell, to say it in a way. Um, what role did the uh, lockdown and pandemics uh, had to do with that? Yeah, a lot. I think like we literally couldn't play any gigs. And if we did choose to, it would be like, sort of like people standing in bubbles, which we didn't really want to start by doing that. We wanted to come out with a bang and like, that just meant that we had to wait for ages and which was a good and bad thing. But we really like thought about how we wanted to sound and like perfected everything. And yeah, we kind of like came out of the gate, like all guns blazing, <laughs> like from like our first gig at like a tiny little pub. So <laughs> kind of waiting for the world be ready for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, I, I wanted to ask about that, Emily, because you were in a 
Queen tribute band? That's, that's right. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I, yeah, I started doing that like literally just before COVID and we were going to go like, we were going to be like the entertainment band on cruises. <laughs> <laughs> so that what didn't actually work been? out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know that uh, Freddie Mercury, the, uh, he had a song uh, called Barcelona. Mm. Which, yeah, with Montserrat. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I was singing that yesterday when we landed. Like, <laughs> Barcelona! <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, having that, uh, that, such a theatrical song like that, I mean, with an opera singer like Montserrat Caballé and such a, um, I mean, one of the greatest entertainer of all times, like Freddie Mercury. I mean, how does kind of suit your spirits, your aesthetic, your maximalism approach to music and all you are? Definitely. Yeah. I think Queen's a huge inspiration for all of us. We've got quite varied music tastes, but that's that's one of those core ones that I think we've all grown up on Queen. It's just, yeah, absolutely iconic. And is it is it cool to have Queen as a as an inspiration? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I mean, and of course, if it's not, it's it's cool yeah. to have yeah, yeah, an, an cool, cool uh, inspiration. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I don't know. Is it cool? I think, people, I think people sometimes think of Queen as just like, um, Another one bites the dust and like we mm. will rock you. But their back catalogue is actually so incredible, like yeah. so diverse, mm -hmm. so much good stuff to get into. And I think people just know the kind of we will rock you's and think it's like cheesy, but it's actually there's just so much to love. Um, so I think it's cool as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Living on My Own by Freddie Mercury. I mean, yeah, stunning. exactly. B banger. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 to be honest, I think if you grow up in the UK, it's just in your veins, basically. Mm, yeah, it just yeah. doesn't. It's hard not to be influenced. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It turns along with like the cookie. <laughs> yeah. so it's like Queen. <laughs> Queen's catalogue. <laughs> so um, talking about your debut album, uh, you said you wanted it to be a mission statement. What does that mission statement say? I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, it is, yeah, it's, I guess, it's a kind of the ethos that we want as a band, which is not to do things with an imagined kind of total audience that we couldn't please or a trend or a genre to follow. It's a kind of idea of us just following what's interesting and inspiring to us at any given period and kind of starting as we mean to go on, which is just doing like whatever we want rather than being like, oh, like maybe we need to do something that would get this amount of streams or this hit this kind of audience or get this kind of person. I think that's where you can go wrong as an artist. And I think there's already five of us. So if we just kind of make each other happy, then then we're doing the right thing. Well, one, one thing I love about some bands, and this is something you've definitely got, is there's a whole world, you know? So it's not just like the music. It's like you can sort of like just think of the whole world. I'm thinking of like, for example, the video to Caesar on a TV screen, which is amazing. It's like one of my, my favorite videos. Was, was that like a conscious thing, creating a world as you went along? Yeah, totally. I mean, it kind of, it came before we'd even practiced, I think, the kind of genesis of of the world that we wanted to create. I think we've always admired artists who do carve out that kind of space for themselves and are undefined by genre. And I think those those artists that we admire, they all kind of um, inhabit their own world rather than a time or space. They kind of carve it out for themselves and that's the kind of thing that we really admired. And um, yeah, it, the, the, the world kind of came naturally with the music as well. And I think it has, had the consequence of, of providing a kind of safe space for people to express themselves at our at our gigs as well. So it's it's a really lovely thing. <laughs> and how does people express themselves at your gigs? They look better than us. Yeah, they do. Yeah. 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 They look way better than us. Yeah. I'm not That's sure about that, but... <laughs> <laughs> And you have mentioned, for instance, uh, Bowie, and, and I think that it's maybe one of these artists that suit on what you were explaining mm. right now. Um, any more recent examples that with artists that you uh, grew up with, for instance? I was going to say, I thought you were just asking for recent artists, so I was going to say Chapel Roan. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. Massive inspiration. We love Chapel Roan. Yeah, Lana Del Rey, Florence the Machine. Florence the Machine, definitely. Um, you always have seen Lana today. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna run. I mean, people were running to to, to get there. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. From the front row today. People were queuing since like eleven yeah. o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. Everyone's really. I'm sorry. I'm getting really distracted 
by like everyone's outfits. Yeah. Like, I'm really good at this first one. I'm just like, hmm. Everyone's saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, because I, I think I'm probably saying you, your first gigs, you had um, a kind of dress code and then you ditched the dress code, <laughs> but the audience took it on, right? <laughs> we grow weaker as they grow stronger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, 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 <laughs> I, I, I've, got, I, I've got it written down uh, from Greek myths and fairy tales to the language of flowers. Yeah. What, what was it? How would you define that, that sort of dress code? That was also inspired by Chopper Rowan because she did that for her tour and we were like, that's a great idea, let's do that. But I guess, I don't know, I think it's just now it's kind of known that it's a place where you can dress up and express yourself and have fun with clothes and with style and with makeup and hair and everything. So, yeah, I think people have just they just now know one of our gigs is somewhere they can go and do that. So it's, yeah, it's really cool. We don't need to set codes anymore because yeah, people just come, come in their finery <laughs> and it's, it's great. Um, I was mentioning uh, Black Midi before, and also um, I think that uh, uh, Black Country New Road, who, who were already sitting there, um, I think it was last year. Well, mm -hmm. Oh, the years passed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you, with them, kind of um, came out from this, the same South London scene. Um, I think that what you all have in common with the different genres, different kind of music you play, it's uh, strong musicianship and character, but also um, a joy of mm. playing. I mean, would you, do you agree with that? I mean, because it really feels that you are enjoying yourself. I mean, seeing you live, I mean, I have seen you uh, on the TV or in videos, but also with the music, I mean, it sounds so joyful and I mean, you want to keep on living with <laughs> listening. Good. Yeah. <laughs> a reason to get up nice. every morning. <laughs> it's like that meme. Have you, I don't know if you, oh, this may be a deep cut. Like, you know that meme of, go. yeah, listen. <laughs> you know that meme where it's like a bus and it's going through a, a thing and oh, there's yes. two guys and one of the guys is looking out a window and it's really sunny and the other guy's looking out a window and it's oh, really dark yeah, and the yeah, one yeah. says nothing matters and the other says nothing matters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the point was of that, but that's yeah, like so music. True. Mm, we are having matters. fun on stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, yeah, we're having a really good time. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I... And talking about nothing matters, I mean, <laughs> of course, um, I mean, it's allowed to say fuck at Primavera Sound Festival. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what are the bizarre uh, words you have used to avoid saying fuck? Shag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rail, we think you're putting bonk. Right. Bonk. Bonk. <laughs> bonk. Root, root. That's yeah, a nice one. one. Yeah. We'll save that for the Australians. Yeah, sure. Um, root. How old is that? It's you. Hey, man. I don't know that man. <laughs> Yeah, you do that too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, what makes uh, such a powerful statement for a, a band with uh, an, an all-female band uh, to make uh, that their first song it's a uh, it's one with a line uh, with a such uh, strong um, well being so uh, determined and I mean I'm not uh, well this statement of. Um, you're having this agency that not being passive sexually. I mean, was that something that you think that helped to people to start clicking that strongly with you? Uh, yeah, I hope so. It's funny because I've I've had to think about that line so much more <laughs> now that <laughs> it's come out. Yeah, because mm -hmm. especially when we had to, for a lot of especially American radio shows, we had to have a censored version, which is we landed on I Will Have You. Um, and it just, it loses so much. And I remember when I wrote that line, I wrote it really without thinking. Like when I wrote, I will fuck you, I was just like, huh. Like, yeah, <laughs> true. That's the truth. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen to me. Um, and I didn't think, yes, this is kind of a, a an important political female statement, which I think is in itself kind of a good thing because it's it's second nature, you know, to, to feel like you have that agency and that power and I want, I hope that's how, you know, women feel when they hear it, that it's, you know, it's not weird. It can you be know? that natural. It can be that natural mm -hmm. that it just, you know, you're not, you don't have to be passive and being assertive or even just, you know, confident in your sexuality it doesn't have to be a huge mission. It can just be something that sits naturally in yourself. Uh, I wanted to ask briefly um, about Feminine Urge, which um, I think you said it was written 
very specifically about a woman's relationship to her mother, which sounds like a really fascinating sort of subject matter. Could you sort of explain that a bit? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, amongst other things, it's about um, that specific um, moment in a young woman's life where she becomes an adult and you start to see your mother as not just a kind of indestructible, infallible, kind of magical being. She becomes another woman and then you're kind of just two women sitting across from each other having lunch with their own traumas and problems and kind of figuring that out and then thinking about your mother as a child and what her mother was like and generational trauma. Um, that's kind of what it's about. Um, we would love to have you here all afternoon but you've got a gig to play I just want to mention uh, Jorge Pineda uh, who's in the chat saying ojalá the last dinner party acaben con el viento en el recinto y se conviertan en un tornado en el escenario well he hopes basically that you get rid of the wind that's around here <laughs> that you become a tornado uh, on stage Okay, we'll so try. Suddenly you are yeah. a storm from X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll try our best. Uh, you are on the Cupra stage at uh, 6.50, which is just over there. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, thank you so much for coming along. Um, and yeah, hopefully, I, I'm pretty sure we'll see you back here uh, sometime in the future. Hope so. Thank you so much. Thanks thank for having you. us. <laughs>